Welcome to Holy Golden Doodle's channel. Meet our associates, their ranking in our pack, their status as our house dogs, and most importantly, our family members. Follow us as our eight week old puppies grow up to hopefully become healthy moms of healthy puppies for qualified owners. Health testing, milestones, things they learn, cuteness they share, all included here. Good afternoon for Tuesday. Uh, just wanted to get on here and do a little bit of a video for entertainment purposes and just for you to, you know, hear the word brucellosis in dogs and to kind of maybe know that you've heard a little bit, learned a little bit. Uh, these videos are for entertainment purposes. I'm not a veterinarian. I'm in no way qualified to give advice for any reason. Uh, I just find giving out information to the general public if they would like to know of a certain thing give them enough information to where they can go and do their own reset search and draw their own conclusions about what they find someone asked me the other day about what this was and so i'm going to do my best to give you factual information from my studies across the web so i, I know a little bit but i want to share what i share from people that are considered experts because I am not one. And then you can look further into your situation, these things, so you can find your uh, find out your own information. Brucellosis in dogs, uh, in canines actually, is contagious and it's a bacterial infection and it's caused by the bacterium Brucella canis. The bacterial infection is contagious, it's highly contagious between dogs. Infected dogs usually develop an infection of the reproductive system or a sexually transmitted disease. Different species of brucella infect sheep, goats, cattle, deer, elk, pigs, and other animals. Coming up, you'll see a diagram of the inflamed one testicle or one enlarged, one small inflamed uterus and the horns of the uterus running up both sides. There's a closer up of the enlarged testicle or the inflamed scrotum. And that's where the problem arises in the inflammation. That's where it shows in the female and in the male as well. So Roxy and Bougie and Paris, as you can see, are out here just hanging out with me on the back deck while I tell you about brucellosis. One reason why I brought this up, I've been talking to someone from Michigan. I believe they're from Northern Michigan. And we're in the preliminary talks of using their mail for me to use for a papa for my two girls that I'm gonna breed someday. But I have to have, I've had to be very picky about what, what dogs I use. For the dad so these people were awesome so far now they're checking with their vet to see what the cost is for artificial insemination and or how we're going to do this breeding if we even do it this november when the next heat cycle comes around but anyway that's what got me on the subject and their dog was already tested for it and tested negative which is awesome that's what you want Okay, the signs of brucellosis in a male, they develop epididymitis, an infection in part of the testicle, scrotum, or an enlarged testicle, and it may have a skin rash on the scrotum. So uh, the dog may atrophy or uh, uh, their testicle may be atrophied or become shrunken, which it could be either one side's big, the other side's not, and so on. Um, in the female, they have abnormalities in the uterus and in the tube, you know, in the parts of the uterus where the puppies are. They may have a difficulty getting pregnant. They may be infertile because of the brucellosis, or they may lose their puppies late in the stages of pregnancy. And I have heard of that where dogs always would not carry their puppies to term, and more than likely the person didn't check for that infection in their dogs or the dog just got pregnant and that's why it never kept its puppies. I knew a lady that had a chihuahua that never carried a pregnancy to term. And anyway, on the uh, 
the female, this can cause the, her to be infertile. She could be have a very difficult time getting pregnant, as I said. Uh, she has often got a vaginal discharge that's persistent. Typically, a pregnant dog with brucellosis will abort about 45 to 55 days of the gestation period or will give birth to stillborn or weak puppies that may die a few days after birth. During the early stages of brucellosis, enlarged lymph nodes are commonly seen or sometimes seen, although fever is uncommon. Occasionally, B. canis will infect the intervertebral discs, the eyes, the kidneys, the heart, or the brain. If the bacteria infects these other tissues, the signs will be related to the bodily system that is infected. How is this spread, you ask? So, large numbers of B. canis bacteria are shed in the genital um, secretion, semen or vaginal discharge of an infected dog. Smaller amounts of bacteria may also be shed in the dog's urine or saliva. After a female dog aborts a pregnancy because of brucellosis, she'll continue to discharge fluids infected with the bacteria for four to six weeks after the abortion. Dogs are exposed to the disease by the contact with the infected body, body fluids. So if there are other dogs around and they come in contact with that body fluid, that's, that's a, a dangerous thing. Although the most common route of infection is oral from licking contaminated urine or discharge from reproductive tract or licking or chewing placental material of an aborted fetus, dogs can also pick up an infection through sexual transmission. Inhalation, which is sniffing contaminated urine or other discharge, or through other mucous membranes like the eyes. The infection is usually diagnosed by a blood test. The most common blood test is called a rapid slide agglutination test or RSAT, RSAT, and it can detect infections after three to four weeks. The test is used for screening of breeding dogs and negative tests are reliable unless the dog has been recently exposed to the disease. False positive tests are commonly, <clears throat> excuse me, are relatively common. And any dog that tests positive with the RSAT test should have the disease confirmed with an advanced test. Likewise, the tube agulination test or TAT test, which provides an actual measurement titer of antibodies against B. canis can also be used as screening tests. A more specific test called an agar gel Immunodiffusion test, or AGID, AGID, will identify infected animals between 12 weeks and one year post-infection. Also, other tests include ELISA assays, PCR testing, and bacterial culture to look for the B. canis organism itself. Surgical sterilization of the infected dog will decrease shedding of the organisms into the environment, thereby reducing the risk to other dogs. Supportive treatment for any other organ system that has been affected by the bacteria is also geared to the specific case. How can it be controlled? Any kennels reporting a brucellosis case must be immediately quarantined and if infected animals must be prevented from breeding and preferably eliminated from the kennel. The bacteria itself does not survive well in the environment, although people working with infected dogs should wear protective equipment. It's a pretty serious thing. Brucellosis has been reported in dogs in both the United States and Canada, with many of these cases originating in dogs imported from other parts of the world. Since the disease is a major threat to the breeding capability of dogs, all dogs used for breeding purposes should be tested regularly every three to six months, depending on exposure to other dogs. And like I said, the people I was talking to last night have had their dog tested so far. Um, let me see what all else I wanna share. 
New dogs should never be introduced into a kennel situation until they have been quarantined and then tested for the disease. Most experts recommend performing two blood tests four weeks apart near the end of the quarantine period. In the United States and in some Canada provinces, brucellosis is a reportable disease, meaning that it is of great public health importance and veterinarians and physicians are required to report all positive cases. All right, am I at risk for developing brucellosis from an infected dog? Can I catch it from the dog? Brucellosis is a zoonotic disease or a disease that can be transmitted from animals to humans. Although people can become infected by coming in contact with infected animals, it's not common. Breeders and vets exposed to blood or other secretions of infected animals are at increased risk of developing infection. Pet owners are not considered to be high risk for infection because they're less likely to come in contact with blood, semen, or uterine discharge. However, people with compromised immune systems should avoid contact with a dog that's been diagnosed with that, with brucellosis. People who come in contact with breeding dogs, newborn puppies, or aborted fetuses should use contact and practice, should use caution and practice good sanitation. Whenever possible, wear gloves that are disposable and rinse well. Well done. So here's some questions that you may have about this disease. And I already answered what it is. It's an infection disease, infectious disease uh, caused by Bicanus bacterium. Uh, it's important from a public health perspective. The signs of brucellosis in dogs, I've already said, how they get infected is through sexual contact or licking or being around while a female while it's in heat or any kind of body fluid after they've lost puppies, so on and so forth. Can your dog be cured from it? That is very difficult to do if the dog's infected. Treatment's not always recommended for dogs in a breeding kennel <clears throat> or for dogs that can't be isolated and given antibiotic therapy because they may continue to be a source of infection for other dogs. Treatment is very expensive. Several, several weeks of antibiotic therapy are required and success is not guaranteed. Relapse is common even after continual use of antibiotics. Spaying and neutering your dog can reduce transmission risk, but this procedure alone has not been proven to decrease risk of infection to others because it doesn't remove the chronically infected. And see, with me, I, these are my dogs. They're not breeding kennel dogs. They're not that. They're my house dogs. And so if one of mine came down with that and I treated it and they said it was still at risk of infecting other dogs, my other two dogs would be spayed and that would be the end of the breeding because I that that's why I'm set apart from uh, breeding programs is my dogs are not here for as a breeding business. They are my house pets. And my goal in having puppies with these dogs is to uh, raise some really, really great house dogs for someone. And the middle dog that's red looking over there, she, she spayed anyway. How can you prevent canine brucellosis uh, before you breed your dog? Both the male and the female should be vet examined and tested for the disease. It's just a simple blood test. Um, they should not be bred if they test positive for brucellosis and you need to test them right before you breed them. You know, there's a couple of times you gotta test them before, but even if it's been three months, you need to check them before you breed them because they can be infected at any time. Now with me, I have a fenced in yard and I do not, live around anyone with other dogs my dogs are not around other dogs if they could pass that on so I'm pretty well low risk around here so how you can prevent it you can get the vet to examine the dogs keep them isolated until a second negative test happens you got two negative tests uh, your dogs can be bred and they should not be if they test positive for it uh, can you get sick too? Uh, I think they said it's very, very uncommon. It, you, it can happen, but it's very uncommon. Um, somebody that has a compromised immune system should probably 
Stay away from a dog infected with it. Young children, pregnant women, or persons with artificial heart valves are at higher risk. How does it spread from humans to dogs? The mo most common way humans become infected is through contact with birthing fluids, with uh, puppies that have been spontaneously aborted, from vaginal discharge from the female. Um, an infected dog with brucella canis can be transmitted if the infected materials contact a person's mucous men membrane or abraded skin, which if your skin's got abrasions in it. The organism can also be present in canine urine, feces, or nasal secretions. Uh, typical symptoms of canine brucellosis in humans. They're often mild and nonspecific. The most common signs are hum of a human infected with it is a regular fever accompanied by headaches, weakness, generalized aching, and lymph node enlargement. In more severe infections, joints, bones, or heart valves may be affected. Persons who believe they've been exposed to B. canis should be aware of signs and symptoms and consult their medical provider if they become ill. This is from Wisconsin Department of Health Services, Public Health. It's important to know that currently available human antibody tests for brucellosis cannot detect antibody, antibodies against B. canis. Therefore, testing should be a blood culture uh, collected prior to antibiotic administration, which you don't need to know all that. You just know if you're sick, you need to go get checked, you know, but it's so rare. How long after exposure would I become ill if I was exposed? Signs of the illness can occur within one week to several months. On average, signs and symptoms will begin, begin three to four weeks following infection. How do you keep yourself or others from getting canine brucellosis if your dog's infected? There is no available vaccine for it. The best preventive measures include yearly testing of all your breeding dogs, testing all dogs introduced for breeding, only breeding non-infected dogs, cleaning and disinfecting common areas, and housing, lining yard with pea rocks to prevent moist areas, using gloves when assisting with uh, whelping dogs, and refraining from placing infected dogs in the homes as pets because they can shed the bacteria in their urine. Okay, so my dogs will be in the home. They're always going to be in the home. They're not going to be breeding stock out in a barn or a breeding kennel. I know there are awesome places that, that do that, and they have staff and employees that watch over the dogs and that t take care of the dog's needs and make sure their runs are clean and all that. But here, what I'm doing is raising and have raised two beautiful breeding females who are my house dogs and just happen to be intact. Roxy Spade, they're all very well protected and they're going to be in my house. They're not, these dogs are not treated as um, a business. So, uh, protective measures such as, I've lost my place because I answered a text. Wearing latex rubber gloves should be taken to prevent contact with infected reproductive secretions, urine and tissues, and I've already said all that. Uh, for infected pet dogs, which is what I have, there are measures that owners can take to reduce the risk for humans or other dogs to acquire, acquire the infection. It should be noted that no measures short of euthanization the infected animal should be considered absolutely effective. Control measures include a three-step process of neutering the dog, antibiotic treatment, a retesting for brucellosis can be done, repetition of treatment may be necessary, and treatment ultimately may not be successful, especially in male dogs, due to persistent infection of the prostate. Do not breed infected dogs. Practice good hygiene. Wear gloves when cleaning up contaminated areas by dog feces or wash hands thoroughly when done. Properly dispose of dog waste and launder potentially contaminated clothing, dog blankets, dishes. Contaminated wet areas can be dried and disinfected with a 1% bleach solution. Do not take the dog to public areas such as parks, beaches, pet stores, or jogging paths. Limit the dog's contacts to as few people as possible. Do not allow the dog to lick or mouth people or other dogs. 
Okay, so that's pretty much everything I do anyway. My dogs are fine. They act fine. And um, when I mop my house, I always use 1% bleach. My dogs are very, very well housebroken. They are attended to at the vet very regularly. So we'll see what happens from here out. They will have a brucellosis test prior to breeding and the, I have no reason to think they do have it. It's just that if I use that breeder that I talked to last night, if I end up using that uh, breeder that you, has stud available, then uh, their dog's brucellosis tested, my dogs will be, just for everyone's protection. So that's what brucellosis is. It's a sexually, sexually transmitted or bodily fluid transmitted disease in several types of animals, but also in dogs. It causes them to abort puppies if they get pregnant. It causes difficulty in them getting pregnant if they're, you're trying to breed them and it can cause the male problems in breeding. So uh, that's pretty much it. There's treatment for it with antibiotics, but never maybe a cure, just keeping it at bay if you keep it at bay and your dog is spayed, it can have discharge or it can have on and off infection, especially the male. And again, I'm not a veterinarian. I'm not a vet tech. I'm not an expert. I'm not a teacher. These, uh, uh, these videos I make are from information that I have educated myself with from across the web. <coughs> But ultimately, it's our veterinarian that makes our decisions on our dogs and that tests our dogs and that we do everything through them and for them that we can possibly humanly do. Thanks for watching my video on brucellosis in canines and do your own research. Be sure you give me a thumbs up, click like, share, subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment. Say hi. Where are you from? What kind of dogs do you have or whatever? I love hearing from you. Thanks for watching. Bye now.